Hello, I'm Abi, and welcome back to Fluke's channel. Today we have an exciting video where we'll be benchmarking and comparing our TriSwift Turbulent All-in-One or AIO liquid cooler versus two competitive AIOs that are commonly found within high-performance workstations. We'll be using our new Intel 12th gen test bench and comparing the thermal performance between these three AIOs and showing you the results by the end of the video. This is our TriSwift Turbulent All-in-One liquid cooler. Just like all the AIOs we're testing today, it features a 360 millimeter radiator. However, there are a few differences when it comes to our TriSwift cooler. First of all is that our radiator is made out of copper and it features a powerful but quiet 600 liter per hour pump and our proprietary multi-inlet water block. Here, fluid travels from the pump into the dual inlets of our water block where the fluid converges and creates increased turbulence. With this turbulence, we have a higher rate of heat transfer and greater thermal performance. Here we have competitor number one. It is another 360 millimeter AIO that is often used within high performance workstations. However, this AIO features an aluminum radiator and a pump integrated within the water block. This is competitor number two's AIO that also features an aluminum radiator. However, the pump is integrated within the radiator itself. This is our test bench. It features an overclocked i9-12900K on an Aorus Z690 DDR4 motherboard. The CPU is clocked at 5.2 gigahertz, 1.335 volts for all tests, and the memory is clocked at 3600 megahertz with standard timings. No power bottlenecks as we are using a 1000 watt power supply, and we like using this case as it acts as a good open air test bench. We're also isolated in this room where we can monitor the ambient temperature with this basic thermocouple. Also, there's plenty of time between the tests to allow for components to cool down. The fan and pump profiles will be set within the BIOS to full speed for each AIO. Although the components for each AIO is different, this is simply to test the max thermal performance. For each test, we'll be using the same thermal paste approximately putting the same amount and covering the full IHS of the processor. However, we will be using different mounting systems as each cooler comes with its own respective mounting hardware. We will be running one test, A to 64 stability test for 15 minutes and comparing the max CPU temperature using hardware info. Although the test can be run for much longer, 15 minutes is enough time to simply see how each cooler behaves as temperatures start to ramp up and then stagnate. Also, for the purposes of this video, this is a simple test to run to benchmark the thermal performance of each cooler. At the end of the video, we will show the results in an easy to read graph. Let's get to testing. We have finished our testing and this graph shows all of the consolidated results. The y-axis shows an image of each cooler we tested and the x-axis indicates the average CPU package delta T over ambient temperatures. That's the CPU package temperature minus the ambient temperature inside the room we tested in. This is all on our overclocked 12900K after various 15 minute passes of ADA 64. We want to remind the audience that the fan slash pump curves on all coolers were locked at full speed in the BIOS. Starting with competitor number two's AIO, this cooler had the pump integrated into the radiator. The results show that it performed the worst in our testing. Here's an image of the mount, so there is good contact indicated here. However, this cooler did not finish any of the 15 minute runs in ADA 64. On average, the CPU thermal throttled in two minutes time with various performance cores hitting 97 degrees C, and then the system shut down on an average of around four minutes during testing due to thermal throttling and the CPU shutting down automatically due to its safety protocols. Competitor number one's AIO performed better during testing. This was the cooler with the pump integrated into the block. The result shows an average that the delta T over ambient after multiple 15 minute runs of A to 64 was 71 degrees C. 
Here's a picture of the, one of the mounts showing good pressure. However, there are areas where contact is missing. This can be due to air pockets in the thermal paste or the common issue of the convex IHS on Alder Lake CPUs. Our 12900K in this test bench does have the convex issue on its IHS. Finally, our TriSwift Turbulent all-in-one liquid cooler performed very well. The result shows that on average, the Delta T over ambient after multiple 15 minute runs was 64 degrees C. 7C lower than the competitor number one's AIO. Here's a picture of one of the mounts during testing, showing that although we had great results, there are still areas where contact with the IHS can be improved overall. To conclude, we would like to add that if you're a workstation manufacturer looking to test one of our turbulent all-in-one liquid coolers, visit fluixpro.com to schedule a demo. We look forward to being your liquid cooling partner. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure to click the like button and consider subscribing for more water cooling and high performance content. If you have any questions, make sure to post them in the comment section below.